Galatians chapter 1, uh, verses 6 through 9. Oh, and I should mention this. Um, I, some of you guys might know this. There, there's a, a Catholic gentleman who made a video uh, trying to refute my teaching on Galatians 1, this exact passage. So this is a Christian versus Protestant update on the video we did about Mike Winger and his interpretation of Galatians 1. I would recommend watching that video before watching this one because this is an update from what we talked about in that video. I would also recommend that you subscribe to this channel. Click the like button. It's very easy to do. And if you like it in the next five seconds, I will throw in these oriental coasters for free. According to the back, made in Taiwan. Anyway, I want to start with a recap of Galatians 1, just so everyone knows what we're talking about here. We're going to pull up the timeline for this. Here's the past. Here's the future. Here's a point in time when Paul wrote a letter to the Galatians. In that letter, he even states that he is Paul, and he's writing this to the churches of Galatia. And in that letter, Paul says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. So who is the you here? Who is it that is so quickly deserting him who called them in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel? Who is this you that is causing Paul to be astonished? It's the Galatians. That's who he's writing the letter to. I am astonished that you, the Galatians, are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. So with that in mind, let's put another point on the timeline. This indicates the point in time when the Galatians deserted him who called them in the grace of Christ and turned to a different gospel. That obviously happened before this letter was written because this is why the letter is being written. So they turned to a different gospel. Paul found out about it. Paul was astonished by this. That's another point on the timeline. And then Paul wrote this letter to the Galatians. Paul continues in the letter by saying, Even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. So again, when Paul indicates that there's a gospel that he preached to you, the you here is referring to the Galatians. So going back to the timeline, before the Galatians turned from the gospel, they obviously learned the gospel. They were preached the gospel. So this is the point in time when Paul preached to the Galatians the gospel. This is the point in time when the Galatians turned to a different gospel. This is the point in time when Paul found out about that and he was astonished. And this is the point in time when Paul wrote the letter to the Galatians. And much later on down the timeline, this letter to the Galatians actually became compiled into what Christians know today as the Christian Bible. So knowing all that, let's go back to Galatians, and Paul tells them, If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Who is the you here? Which gospel is it that Paul is telling the Galatians he doesn't want anyone to contradict? This here, the one you received, that refers to the gospel that the Galatians received. Back here on the timeline. Before the Christian Bible was compiled as we know it today, before this letter to the Galatians was even written, before the Galatians turned away from the gospel that was preached to them, back here, at this point on the timeline, this is the gospel that Paul wants them to compare all gospels to. And Paul says, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one that you received, this gospel here, if anyone preaches to you a gospel that's contrary to this one here, let him be accursed. So that's what Paul's teaching there in Galatians 1. So now let's do a recap of what Mike Winger said was taught in Galatians 1. Galatians 1 has this beautiful passage where Paul threatens himself <laughs> and anyone else who is to preach a false gospel or even actually he just says a different gospel. So that means that the, the hearer, the Galatian person who read this and me and you, to whom God wrote it as well, we're supposed to hear what, hear what comes from other people, leaders and teachers, and say, let me compare that to what I've already received. So this here is what Mike Winger taught. We just heard him say it. It's his video. He posted it. He allowed this to be on YouTube. This is his teaching. So he tells us this is what Galatians 1 means. He says it means that the hearer, the Galatian person who read this, and me and you, to whom God wrote it as well, we are supposed to hear what comes from other people, leaders and teachers, and say, let me compare that to what I've already received. No, that's not accurate, that's not Christian, that's actually anti-Christian. And it makes no sense at all. First of all, we already looked at this. The letter to the Galatians was, shocker, a letter to the Galatians. Not to me and you. I mean, sure, all Christians believe that God inspired Galatians and that it's a useful letter for us to read and learn from, but when we read the letter, we don't replace ourselves with the you here. But that's what Mike Winger is teaching people to do. Mike Winger is literally saying we're supposed to hear what comes from other people and say, let me compare that to what I've already received. No, that's not what Paul's teaching. Paul is saying that we're supposed to hear what comes from other people and say, let me compare that to what the Galatians already received back here, prior to the compilation of the Bible and even prior to the writing of this letter in the Bible. So Mike's action here of opening up his Bible doesn't make any sense in this context because Paul wasn't telling the Galatians, open up your Bible and see what I told you. He's saying, remember what I preached to you in the past, before I wrote this letter, which would eventually end up in the Bible. The major flaw with Mike Winger's teaching is he's saying we're supposed to hear what comes from other people and say, let me compare that to what I've already received. 
Paul never said that. He said compare it to what the Galatians already received back here. If you follow Mike's man-made system, you're just going to end up believing whatever you started off believing. For instance, I follow gospel, and Mike Winger follows a different gospel. That means one of us, if not both of us, definitely have the wrong gospel. So if a third party came to Mike and I, and they presented us with a gospel, and we heard what came from that other person, and then we both said, let me compare that to what I've already received, then we're both going to end up just believing the same gospel we started with. It's such a dumb system because you're never going to learn anything. Again, if you want to learn about all that in a bit more detail, feel free to check out our other video. It is linked in the description below. Also, these videos are related to the topic. They don't deal with Mike at all. It just gives a lot more information on this particular topic. And the links for those will all be listed below too. All right, so that's it for the recap. Now for the update portion. Why do we do updates here on Christian versus Protestant? Because in addition to showing you how these Protestants teach falsely about the Bible, we also want to show you how those same Protestants cannot refute any of the facts that we're telling you about them and show you the hilarious ways that they try to cover up their false teachings. So take it away, Mike. A Catholic gentleman who made a video uh, trying to refute my teaching on Galatians 1, this exact passage. Um, I'm not really responding to that. Um, he was, his, he just distorted my, my perspective. I would spend my whole time saying, that's not what I said, that's not what I said. All right, so Mr. Winger's first strategy here is to just deny he ever said what he actually said. Little tip for anyone watching though, if you're gonna deny saying something, might want to make sure there's not video footage of you actually saying it. We already heard what Mike Winger said. Here's the exact quote that Mike Winger said. This is what we addressed. This is what we're talking about. Unless Mike Winger is trying to say that somebody doctored this footage and then uploaded it to his YouTube channel, because that's where we got it from, then the guy's got no case. This is exactly what he said. These are his words. Now what's interesting here is he does say twice that that's not what I said, that's not what I said. But then I get the feeling that something clicks in his head and he's like, oh crap, that is what I said. So he switches it up for his last statement here. I would spend my whole time saying, that's not what I said, that's not what I said, that's not what I meant. Oh, so that's not what he meant. It definitely was what he said, but might not have been what he meant. At least that's his argument at the moment. It's not a very good one though, because what we thought Mike meant was that Galatians 1 taught sola scriptura. And Mike is currently saying this, that's not what I meant portion. That's not what I meant. In a video where he is claiming that Galatians 1 teaches sola scriptura. And I would say there's another passage that weighs in on this. I think in a significant way, and I think it's often ignored um, in conversations on sola scriptura, and that is Galatians chapter 1. So Mike actually just reinforced that we knew exactly what he meant, and we addressed exactly what he meant. Again, a tip for everybody who's watching, if you're going to deny something, that typically works better if there's not video evidence that completely refutes your denial. So we did know what Mike meant. He was talking about sola scriptura. So Mike, what is this sola scriptura? Sola Scriptura, in a nutshell, it is saying that Scripture, that this alone, Scripture alone is the final authority for Christians on what they believe and how they live. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The Scriptures are an authority in Christianity, but they are definitely not the final authority in Christianity. Going back to the timeline, a long, long time ago, the teaching on circumcision in Scriptures was this. God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. I just realized something. You get cut off for not being cut off. Who doesn't love that symmetry? Anyway, that was taught here. Later that got written down here in the book of Genesis. But much later on than that, Peter taught that you didn't need circumcision. Paul also taught that you didn't need circumcision. Even today, Christians teach that circumcision is not necessary for people to be saved. Now these events here, these were later written down in a book called Acts. That book called Acts was eventually recognized as inspired by God and was compiled into the Christian Bible. But let's go back to this part of the timeline here where we have a bunch of people saying that circumcision is not necessary. At this particular point in time, people were also saying, unless you were circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Again, if you go to the book of Acts, which was written here on the timeline, it talks about the events that happened here on the timeline. It talks about events in the past. And it says, at this point in time, some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. So at this point in time, we have people saying circumcision is not necessary. We also have people saying circumcision is necessary. They have two conflicting teachings, and if they do what Mike Winger said, and they use the scriptures as their final authority, then what they're going to find in the scriptures is every male among you shall be circumcised. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So did those Christians say what Mike Winger is saying and say scriptures are the final authority? We should listen to what the scriptures say on this? 
No. Peter said he had a vision that taught him that people don't need to be circumcised anymore. Christians believe that this trance that Peter went into and had his vision in was an authoritative teaching from God. They believe Peter, when he taught this, he taught this to the church. Paul shared this teaching on circumcision as well. They weren't saying that the scriptures in Genesis were wrong. They were just saying this no longer applies to us. This has changed. God had changed that teaching. They had the authority to say what God was teaching because as Jesus said, he would build a church and his church has the final authority in what is taught and what is not taught. In addition to that, Jesus said, I've got a lot of things to tell you, but you can't bear to hear them right now. So when he left, he sent a helper, the spirit of truth, who guides them into all the truth. The spirit of truth has taken what is Jesus's and he's delivering it to the authorities in the church. So it's kind of like passing the information down the line. The church got it from the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth got it from Jesus. Jesus got it from God. So Mike Winger's teaching here is man-made, anti-Christian, unbiblical, anti-biblical, because not only is Mike's teaching not found in the Bible, but it also goes against the Bible and it's proven wrong by the facts of reality. So Mike goes on to say this. The scripture alone is the final authority on those things. That's the simple idea of scripture alone. So this, this kind of rejects other authorities that might be coming in saying, no, 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 I'm equal with scripture or I'm, I'm higher than scripture, e either one of those. And we say, ah, no, no, when it comes to Christian faith and practice, it's the Bible that we look to. All right, so we just showed you that what Mike is saying there is false because there's at least one other authority that is greater than the Bible, and that's God. God had the power to say, I'm going to change this teaching on circumcision. Circumcision is no longer necessary. And God can give his new teachings to the people in his church, who he also gave authority to, so they can take his teaching, even if it came in a vision, during a trance, and say, this is what the teaching is. Now, does that mean that Christians don't look to the Bible or Christians don't need the Bible? No. The Christian Bible is great for teaching things that we already know. You may have caught this already on the timelines, but everything that's written in the Bible is something that was already known prior to it being written down in a letter or a book that eventually made it into the Bible. The Christian Bible doesn't give us any new information. It gives us information that was already known. Even the book of Revelation, which is a prophecy about what will happen in the future. God knew the information first. He delivered that information to an angel. That angel gave that information to the writer of Revelation, and then it got written down, and then it was recognized by the church as a writing that was inspired by God and was compiled into the Christian Bible. The Bible itself was never the first to break the story on anything. God knew all the information beforehand. People knew a lot of the information beforehand. Angels sometimes knew the information beforehand, and then it got written down. So the Bible is great for learning about what we already know. The Bible records teachings that have been passed down since the time of Jesus, since even before Jesus. For instance, this teaching in Genesis, this is still a true teaching that actually was taught back at this time. But we don't follow it now because there's new teachings, which also eventually made it into the Bible. So yes, the Bible is great for learning things. As Christians, we can trust and should trust what the Bible has to say. But also as a Christian, it's important to realize that God is not controlled by a book that talks about things that he taught in the past. So basically what's happening here is Mike Winger thinks that the Bible is his final authority. The scripture alone is the final authority. The Bible is an authority. So is the church. So are the people in church who have authority. They're all authorities. But for Christians, if you want to know how to be Christian, your final authority should be God. The Bible does not teach sola scriptura at all. According to the book of Acts, there was an Ethiopian eunuch and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. We're then told the passage of the scripture that he was reading. And we're told that this eunuch said to Philip, about whom I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? So the eunuch didn't know if this passage here was about the prophet who was writing the passage or if it was about someone else. So then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. This Ethiopian eunuch had the scriptures. He was reading the scriptures. The scriptures are words on a page. They're writings. Just like any other writing, they can be interpreted in several different ways. Which is why when the Ethiopian eunuch read this section of scriptures, he had to ask Philip, hey, who's this talking about? Am I supposed to interpret this as he's talking about himself? Or am I supposed to interpret this as he's talking about somebody else? And who is that somebody else? The Ethiopian eunuch realized he can't just take his own interpretation of the Bible and assume it's correct. If he wants to learn the Bible, he actually has to find a source that can tell him what the Bible teaches. So Sola Scriptura, piece of crap teaching. Came from this guy. And unfortunately, it got passed down through the years, and now Mike Winger is teaching it. We know it's a dumb teaching, Mike. Just do the research, man. All right, so now we've looked at what Galatians 1 actually teaches, we've looked at Mike's false teachings, and we explained why there are false teachings. So now we move on to the final part of this update, which is listening to Mike teach his audience what we taught. Or at least that's what he says he's doing. Now, now, you know, I'll go ahead and mention this because uh, um, it's on my head. 
um, even though I said I wasn't going to, but there we go. Um, the gentleman, I, I don't know his name, the guy's name, but the guy who did this video to, to try to refute me, um, he came against my interpretation of Galatians 1 with the following logic. You might get a kick out of this. Now, Mr. Winger, if you're watching, we did get a kick out of this next part, but probably not for the reason you're giggling about. So let's listen to what Mike had to say. He came against my interpretation of Galatians 1 with the following logic. You might get a kick out of this. Um, we don't know what message Paul brought the Galatians. So I never said that. I said that this event, which Paul refers to in Galatians 1, is never recorded in the Bible. That's a fact. We don't have any written transcript of this event in the Bible. We have Paul referring to it. He talks about when he preached the gospel to them in the past, but we never get to see what that gospel was so that we can compare any new gospel to that gospel from the past. Now, Christians do believe that the gospel that's taught in the Bible does not conflict with the gospel that Paul originally taught to the Galatians, but there's nothing in the Bible that lets us verify that. All Christians, even Protestant Christians, have to go to an extra biblical source in order to figure out, is this gospel mentioned in Romans a gospel that does not contradict with the gospel that Paul taught the Galatians back here? So again, I never said what Mike is saying. I never said that we don't know what the gospel is that Paul taught the Galatians. I just said that the gospel that Paul taught the Galatians is not recorded in the Bible. We can know it, but we're just not going to know it from the Bible. We have to find another source if we want to learn that, because the Bible literally never tells us that. But we don't know what Paul brought them, what message he brought the Galatians. I never said that we don't know. I simply pointed out the fact that the Bible doesn't tell us. The Bible doesn't tell me how to fix my car either. Doesn't mean I don't know how to fix my car. Just means the Bible doesn't tell me how to fix my car. So right off the bat, Mike Winger is not telling his audience the truth. Why is he hiding the facts that we actually shared? That's weird. Let's see if he gets back on track and actually starts sharing the facts as he continues. And the message was only for the Galatians, so the Galatians were required to stick to the message and they had to reject anyone who brought a different gospel. All right, so again, I have no idea what Mike's talking about here. The message was not only for the Galatians. The letter was to the Galatians. It was addressed to the Galatians. That's literally written right in the letter. But as we mentioned in our first video, even though the letter is addressed to the Galatians, and yeah, the you here refers to the Galatians, meaning you have to compare new gospels to this gospel here, make sure it doesn't contrast with that one. The letter itself and the advice in the letter is still very useful for Christians. As long as you don't make the same mistake Mike Winger makes and put yourself as this you here, that would be stupid. Don't do that. But no, I would not say that this message was only for the Galatians. I would say this message is for any Christian who wants to learn from this message. I would say that any Christian can take this message and understand that Paul is saying to compare any new gospels to the gospel that Paul originally preached to the Galatians. If anybody tells them a gospel that contrasts with the original gospel that Paul gave to them, don't accept that new gospel. The message here in Galatians 1 is great for all Christians, as long as those Christians know how to read and they don't put themselves as this you. So yeah, this is kind of weird. Mr. Winger is now telling his audience two false things about what we taught. It's almost as if he's trying to keep them in the dark about the facts. But why would a false teacher do that? I don't understand why. Oh. Oh, I, yeah. They wouldn't want their followers to realize that they were teaching something that was false. Anyway, that's two falsehoods straight out of the gate from Mr. Winger. Let's see what happens when he continues. Only the church, meaning the Catholic church in his opinion, can tell us what message Paul brought. Okay, so you might be picking up on the pattern here. That again is not something we said. I never said that only the church can tell us what message Paul brought. The church is one of several sources that can tell us what message Paul brought. An atheist could tell me what message Paul brought. Literally anyone can tell me what message Paul brought as long as they know what message Paul brought. Facts are facts. Anyone can share facts. A Satanist could tell a Christian about Christianity and they can get it spot on because facts are facts. Now, as far as who has authority to say what the true teaching of Christianity is, if you wanted to verify things you're hearing to figure out, is this true? Then the church is one source that you can go to, but it's definitely not the only source. So I have no idea where Mike Winger is getting this stuff, but None of it is what we said. Even in the original video, we had this illustration that showed you other sources of authority that could tell you what the Bible means, if you wanted to verify that what you're being taught is actually true. So here are Mike's falsehoods about what we taught. None of this is true. Mike, if you're up to the challenge, feel free to go through all of our videos, not just the one in question, but all of our videos, and see if we ever said anything that matches what you said we said here. Good luck, man. It's an impossible task. So the truth is, Mike didn't tell his audience what our video was about. He never shared the facts that we shared. I'm not surprised by this. Mr. White did this as well. This is how false teachers operate. So here's the deal, Mike. Here's the list of things that you said we said. You told your audience that none of these teachings are true. Well, guess what? We agree. None of these teachings are true. So how about you try this? Tell your audience what we actually shared in our video 
and see if you can prove that those aren't true. Mike can't do that. James White can't do that. Alan Parr can't do that. Matt Slick can't do that. No Protestant can take the facts that we're sharing on this channel and disprove them because they're facts. Now, am I saying that any of these people or any Protestant at all can't teach you the truth? No, they all teach very true things a lot of the time. But also these people and Protestants like them, they teach things that are false a lot of the time. So if you're a fan of any of these people, I actually think Alan Parr is a cool guy. I like listening to James White and Jeff Durbin in certain situations. I think they'd be fun to meet. The point I'm making here is you can be a fan of these people. I like listening to what these people have to say on certain issues, but I don't just blindly follow them. I do check them on what they're saying. And if they're saying something that's false, I'm not just gonna pretend that it's not false. These people all teach things that are false. So whether you're a fan or not, definitely test people when they're teaching because people you're not a fan of can teach the correct thing. People you are a fan of can teach the wrong thing. That's why we always say, don't trust us, test us. Even if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoyed it enough to subscribe to the channel, which is really easy, you just click the subscribe button, you click that bell, then you have a little thing that opens up. You click the top tier item. I forget what the name of it is right now, but it's on the screen. So click that and then subscribe. But yeah, if you're subscribed and you enjoy the channel, still don't trust us, test us. Figure out if what I'm saying to you is true. So that's the update. I do want to point out one more thing. Mr. Winger did a little name calling in his video. Here's what he said. A Catholic gentleman who made a video uh, trying to refute my teaching on Galatians 1, this exact passage. Mike Winger just called me a Catholic gentleman. He heard a Christian teaching him facts directly out of the Bible, facts about time, normal facts that everyone should accept. He heard a Christian teaching that, and he just assumed that I must be a Catholic Christian. The nerve of that guy. I'm not complaining about that label. I just wanted to point out that when Mike Winger hears a Christian teaching the truth, his mind goes, oh, Catholic, darn Catholic. So as always, if you wanna know how to be Christian, drop the Protestantism, keep the Christianity. And if Mr. Winger calls you a Catholic, you just might be on the right track. All right, so thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please share the link on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter. Tweet the link over to Mike. Feel free to ask him why he made up this entire thing about what we said, and feel free to ask him why he didn't just address the actual facts that we talked about in our video. But yeah, please share it and have a great day.